Uh, hi everyone, Yasthony Queen Tano here. <laughs> Internet's busiest music nerd, and it's time for a reviews of uh, Arca Kicks 2 through 5. Yes, this is a brand new series of albums from singer, producer, songwriter, rapper, pianist, visionary, uh, Venezuela's own Arca. These albums serve as the highly anticipated follow-ups to her uh, wonderful Kick 1 album that dropped last year, which saw her delivering inventive takes on art pop and Latin pop, a host of other things too. I think Arca's move into more vocal-driven music and pop forms has been interesting to say the least, especially since her sense of sonic adventure has not been lost in the process. And that is especially true of this new batch of records, which are a surprise in many ways. After Kick 1, we knew Kick was going to be a musical series of some sort, and it would come to an end eventually. Eventually. But I and many others had no idea all these records were going to collapse onto each other at the end of this year. And on top of it, uh, an additional one, Kick 5, was added onto the list of announced albums. So yes, four brand new albums dropping all at once. Uh, they range in uh, time span from like 34 minutes to 42 minutes. So nothing too uh, time consuming, I suppose. But all of these records uh, range in style, aesthetic, and intensity. I wrestled a lot with how exactly to engage with these projects in this review, especially since, yes, they are separate works, but simultaneously they do sort of reinforce each other a bit. Addressing each album separately in a vacuum in its own review I think wouldn't make total sense, but attempting to rate them and analyze them as a whole uh, doesn't really make sense either. So here's my plan. I'm going to talk about all of these records in this one video in order from my my least favorite in the series to my favorite in the series. Here we go. Okay, so we're starting with Kick 4 here. Like I said, I'm going to talk about these records from my least favorite to my favorite. And yes, it is true that Kick 4 is my least favorite of all of these recently dropped records, but that doesn't mean I don't like it. For the most part, I think it's a decent release. Kick 4 is easily the dreamiest, softest, and most serene and melodic of these Kick projects. A lot of digitally enhanced androgynous croons laced into shimmering beds of synthesizers. The song structures on this one are also a bit uh, more loose, making it easy for the songs to come together into uh, maybe more of a holistic experience as opposed to looking at each track as an individual statement. And over the course of this track list, there are some stunningly beautiful highlights. The way the breathtaking orchestrations and alien vocal leads intertwine on Asuna. Xenomorph Girl features some equally entrancing and wonderful vocal leads, uh, but this time paired with some much more mesmerizing beats. And I also love the very curious and pitched, strange and childlike lead vocals on the song Iha. The build of instrumental layers on Lost Woman Found are also beautiful, but uh, simultaneously make for one of the most immense and powerful moments on the LP as they get so thick and heavy. So absolutely there's highlights on this LP, but simultaneously there were some issues that I found as well as I revisited it. For one, some tracks melodically and structurally come off a bit too vague. Compositionally, there's not a whole lot to hang on to, and in terms of progression, uh, they sort of go nowhere fast. Some of the vocal performances on these songs as well I found to come off a bit too grating, uh, considering just how soft and easygoing the backing instrumentation was, which is especially true of tracks like uh, Witch or even Queer, for example, which uh, uh, I wish I liked that track more. I appreciate it more in the track list than I did as a single. Uh, I've never really been a huge fan of Planning to Rock's uh, vocals, but I do, you know, understand uh, what, uh, you know, their significance is to an artist like Arca, and uh, I think it's incredible that they crossed over here for sure. For this project, the song Alien Inside doesn't really seem to fit in with the rest of the mood and vibe too. Some of the harsh sound effects and very assertive spoken word passages uh, do feel a bit heavy-handed. So again, Kick 4 I think has some really great highlights, and I think overall it does achieve a certain aesthetic and stylistic focus, for the most part anyway, but the songs themselves I found to be kind of a mixed bag. I'm feeling a strong six on this one. 
Okay, next I want to address Kick 2, which stylistically I found to be more along the lines of what I was expecting from the Kick series, given what Arca did on Kick 1. And for the most part, I think it's pretty on par with that record too. Kick 2 is also maybe the least conceptually and aesthetically focused of the Kick records, which seems pretty purposeful as many of the tracks on this thing I think can be digested as individual pieces as opposed to uh, something a part of a, a larger whole. This has led to a lot of tracks that are not only catchy, hit hard, but work well as singles. This is especially true of the songs on this thing, where Arca finds herself bringing together elements of art pop and reggaeton, much in the same way she did on Kalo K off of Kick One, uh, with this very futuristic, spaced out, synth heavy sound. Prada, Rakata, Tiro, and uh, Luna Yena. All bangers, in my opinion. As I said when I heard Kalo K originally, uh, I, I really could do an entire album. <laughs> of this. I also find tracks like these to be some of the most necessary that Arca does today in terms of uh, being at the forefront of crafting a, a sort of postmodern sound in, in Latin pop. But also like Kick 1, on Kick 2, there are these other pieces that are a little short, brief, half-baked, and others that, that I think defy any kind of conventional appeal, sometimes to the point of absurdity, like with the fragmented rhythms and uh, warp synth leads on Aranya, which uh, sound almost like they're trying to parody themselves. There are also a few tracks that don't really feel like they progress past a point of introduction. Lethargy is an example. I love the way that this one flirts with these hip-hop forms and grooves, uh, but it just kind of feels too mild across the run of the track. It doesn't really build up in any way significantly. I will say this, though. Originally, I was not really crazy about Born Yesterday featuring Sia as a single for this project, but hearing it in the context of the record, I enjoyed a lot more, especially considering how much more, I guess, accessible it is than a lot of other stuff here, and uh, having heard an entire record of this style of production up to this point, uh, it does sort of solidify Arca's, you know, imprint and influence on the song itself, even if Sia is kind of dominating uh, vocally on the track. So while Kick 2 I found to be uh, a little all over the place and a bit inconsistent, it is equal parts exhilarating and perplexing. I'm feeling a light seven on this one. Next, let's talk about Kick 5, probably the biggest grower for me in the Kick series. Not only because it was added on later, but it's easily the most understated of all the Kicks. If anything defines this album, I think it's a minimal approach, which for Arca is certainly saying something, since much of her music has this tendency to be very dense, be very glitchy, be very disorienting and difficult to wrap your mind around. So how would an Arca album sound if you stripped it back to uh, musically its most basic and simplest elements, uh, the answer is pretty beautiful. Arca's knowledge of ambient textures and uh, classical keys are on full display on this LP. There are some tracks that run a little brief or fall into some of the same somewhat uh, grating potholes that uh, songs on Kick 4 did, but the plucky, glossy, and classically influenced keys on Estrogen are gorgeous, as are the equally bare piano on Ether. The cycling and increasingly distorted synth arpeggios on Amrep not only remind me of the early work of Aphex Twin, but are pretty mesmerizing too. While Tierno's gentle chords and semi-operatic lead vocals feel like a more fully realized version of what Arca was doing on her self-titled record in 2017. A couple tracks on the back end see Arca exploring more spacious textures. The song La Infinita does feel infinite to a degree, with just this deep cavernous reverb soaking uh, much of the instrumentation here, but the composition at the core of it doesn't feel as grand as the space that it is locked into. However, I think Fire Prayer has a much more gratifying climax, with some classical piano roaring through all of these tension-building layers of synthesizers. There are some slightly underwhelming moments here, and while I do appreciate the more minimal direction and ambient direction of this record, it does seem like Arca kind of struggles to find a cohesive way to go about 
implementing that sound across the entire LP. It's kind of like we get uh, a little bit of a taste of it in one way here, a little bit of another taste of it there. I also think the somewhat glitchy closer feels like something that would have been more appropriate for kick two as opposed to five. But overall, I still found the vast majority of the tracks on this thing beautiful and uh, thought that this record was easily one of the more compelling uh, in the kick series. I'm feeling a decent to strong seven on this one. <laughs> I feel like I'm speed running this review. <laughs> All right, kick three. Easily my favorite of the kick records and uh, one of my favorite records of the year as well. What's funny is I love it so much and uh, simultaneously I have a hard time putting this record into words. But what is clear is this album hunkers down on a lot of the uh, hip hop influences, club influences, glitch influences, and industrial influences that defined a lot of Arca's early work from those stretch EPs and uh, stuff that she had done for like Kanye West's Yeezus. So all those styles are in full effect here once again, but now they're really, really, really being pushed to the brink in such a way where I think Kick 3 is the most explosive, visceral, and show-stopping project Arca has ever done, uh, really career-defining in my opinion. I think this record's an improvement on a lot of things for Arca as well. For one on the opener, Bruja, Arca's rapping abilities have solidified quite a bit since that first Kick LP. She sounds so great, confident, and charismatic on these fragmented, clubby beats loaded with all of these harsh and dystopian perks. The howling vocals and synthesizers over the bridge of the track as well make me feel like I'm being possessed. The following cut also hits some really high intensity points as well, with a horrifyingly industrial twist on, again, these very club-friendly rhythms. In many ways, the song Fiera feels like a futuristic step past all of these loose, woozy, wonky grooves that have defined so many classics off of the Brain Feeder Records catalog. Meanwhile, Skull Queen and Electra Rex push the album's limits of hyperactivity. Speedy beats and jittery vocals and sound effects that uh, feel like I've just drank way too many energy drinks. I'm also reminded of Richard D. James a little bit uh, in this portion of the record. Skull Queen feels like I'm listening to a classic Aphex beat, but with someone hyperventilating over it. The track Ripples features all of these unsettling hyper raps over some dizzying, glitchy beats. Think of uh, any number of tracks off of like Sophie's wonderful project uh, product, but uh, take everything that was disorienting about those songs and multiply it by 10. All the scuzzy, distorted synthesizers and uh, bits of percussion feel like binary code is being violently downloaded into my brain. Senorita is easily hands down the biggest and best industrial rap banger I've heard this year, Death Grips, eat your fucking heart out. What a groove, man. The drums are massive and the glitchy enhancements on Arca's vocals are incredible. Like this track, among many others, hits so hard and there's also this amazing attention to detail. I was also surprised to see a co-credit from Machine Drum on the cut too. From here, we move into a pretty impressive final leg where Arca continues the sensory overload experience. All of the insane layers of vocal chatter in the second half of my two are uh, equally maddening and exciting, while Intimate Flesh is one of the most bassy and sensual cuts on the entire LP, and speaks a lot to this album's overall themes of hedonism, sex, and sexuality. I also find it interesting how the vocal layers on this one are very manipulated and pretty strange as well, but they come together in a way that's more mesmerizing than they even are on some of the more subtle cuts in the Kick series. And with Hoya. I don't think I could have asked for a better calm after the storm of this entire record. The song features a lot of very beautiful sparkling synth passages and some of the most angelic vocals on all of the kick records. Outside of maybe a few tracks not feeling as intense as others, uh, my mind was absolutely blown by this record from first listen and continues to be as I listen to it again and again. And uh, again, this is my favorite of the kick albums and uh, just an incredible 
incredible feat for Arca creatively, I'm feeling a decent to strong nine on this one. And while I do feel the strongest about Kick 3, that's not to totally single that project out as uh, being way more superior than everything else here, because I still do at the end of the day see it as a part of the Kick series as a whole, and I think all five of these albums coming together uh, really assemble into an incredible era and body of work for Arca uh, that not only feels like, you know, a high point for her creatively, but also has me really excited to see what the future for her music is going to be, because she already sounds and feels so ahead of the curve <laughs> in so many ways, like what Arca's music could possibly sound like over the next three to five years is just uh, out of the realm of my imagination, I think. But yes, some really incredible, groundbreaking, and significant work from Arca in these records, and uh, uh, incredible that she was able to come together, complete all of these albums, have all of them coming through with a distinct sound and personality, and uh, uh, what she accomplished here is just really uh, uh, commendable, regardless of what, you know, my or anybody's, you know, individual feelings are on uh, any one single of these records. So, uh, yeah, I, th I think that's, uh, you know, everything I have to say about uh, these albums. Uh, rated them, talked about them, got my opinions out there about them. Uh, let me know what yours are down in the comments, and I will see you guys in the next review. Tran? Zishin, have you given these albums a listen? Did you love them? Did you hate them? What would you rate them? You're the best, you're the best. What should I review next? Hit the like if you like. Please subscribe and please don't cry. Hit the bell as well. Over here next to my head, it's another video that you can check out. Hit that up or the link to subscribe to the channel. Anthony Fantano, Arca, Kick, one, two, three, four, five forever.